Hello and welcome to another episode of Gifting a Docsite. Today we're looking at this PR that adds include if support for git config. In case you're wondering, include if that looks like this. It's conditionally including another config file based on some condition in this case on branch. If I'm on branch uh, on the branch work tree stack, I automatically put in a particular config file that changes the template configuration so that I get my commits pre-filled with the right issue ID. And there's a bunch of additional capabilities here or conditions, which is git dir, git di, and on branch. And I started looking at this from the position of tests and we already have tests for unconditional includes and also for conditional includes. However, if we run this, you'll see that the conditional includes, oh, come on, I need to stop running this, thank you. Then here it looks like, even though there's, a, yeah, there's some debug uh, statements still in the code, we can fix that, but on the conditional side, there seems to be just one big test, which I think I already criticized as something that should be broken up into smaller tests, if at all possible. And I think it is possible here because they don't all affect each other. Multiple conditions can, won't affect each other, but you might be able to use this to say, okay, I want this condition to be true based on that context or this condition. So you can um, use this to your advantage, but it still means that we don't test on branch where git dir is tested or git di where the standard git dir is tested. I don't know. It's certainly something that can be cleared up a little. For on branch, I already took some notes here because I think some tests are clearly missing, which I derive from looking at the documentation. And here's a bunch of capabilities that are seemingly not tested by the single on branch test that uh, for instance doesn't deal with globs or it doesn't test globs it might properly deal with it but we wouldn't know and i forgot to change code here anyway so now that on branch, I think needs a couple of tests. Let's look at the other ones. So git dir i and git dir. So here we have a relative directory and a slash that trails it. Let's see if that is anything special. So besides the fact that a trailing or that we can use globs as well. And tilde prefix. And look, single slash, a single tilt and tilt slash will both work. Do we have tilt slash? Or we might not have single tilt. So do I, why do I not find Tilde here. Okay. Tilt slash. And that's it. So I think single tilde. We should be sure that this works. That is just the home directory, the plain home directory. Okay. So definitely something to remember. Good dear. A single tilde matches the home directory. Then the pattern starts with the dot slash. It's replaced with the directory containing the current config file. So the file that contains this conditional include, that's its directory is significant here. I didn't see a dot slash, huh? I mean that, ah, and if the pattern does not start with either tilt slash, dot slash, or 
uh, ask request slash it will automatically be prepended ah no wait sorry or slash it will basically do a substring search and matches all the paths that end with something. Okay, so this is mentioned here. The pattern is prefixed and suffixed with git dir. Maybe we have ZYB. Ah. ZYB, do I? Does this matter, ZYB? And options with good dear dear. So maybe that does matter, or no, wait, here. ZYB. Um. ZYB, anybody? ZY, ah, you have ZY. So, so this is the trailing slash, but I don't know if we, I mean the prepending, I think that might be implicitly tested. I think this is tested then because this is relative and then there is the correct prefix. Cool. So that is tested, but dot slash, we do we do test dot slash, good. So only the tilt seems to be missing for now. Uh -huh. The pattern ends with a slash, this will automatically be added. So I think this is kind of two in one, the ZY, ZY slash. Okay, great. And you can use patterns. Are we using patterns here at all? Wildcards, huh? Standard lobbing, wildcards, path matching. I think there should be one that kind of tests this more specifically. Uh, Matching on test validating user wild cards are respected and that path matching is used. Okay. not I mean maybe it's not missing test but they could be more specific it could be more clear as I compare to the documentation uh, please try to couple of the tests so it's not just a big a big one but rather multiple potentially with shared a shared code for setup something like that okay and then there's has config remote URL. Are we doing this? It's really, really new. And I personally say we don't need this. Has config just mentioned here, so we don't do that. Let's ignore, ignore that. A few more notes on matching git dir and git dir. Symlinks in git dir are not resolved before matching. Both the symlink and real path version of path will be matched outside of git dir. Okay. 
Okay. So this is, whew. is this something, some, something we test explicitly? It doesn't look like it, huh? I have the feeling there's absolute path with symlink. So that probably, that probably is the test we were looking for, huh? It's also interesting here. This looks a bit like it's a preamble to this because it matches both before replacing some links and after. Oh, wait, am I getting this right? Oh yeah, I do get this right. So those who want the previous behavior have to specify two paths, which is doable, but we will match against both. Note that dot dot slash is not special and we match literally, which is unlikely what you want. Huh, dot dot slash is not special. Yeah, I mean, if we canonicalize anything or do a real path on anything, then it kind of is special. I mean, because it will be affected by that. Oh, well. But that's it. That seems easy enough. But that also seems like a bit of work to pull the tests apart. And with that, I think it's fair to have a closer look at the code itself. So this is not this is not where this is, right? So resolve includes well where am I? Resolve includes should do it from end functions. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay, I think the next thing is the organization of this crate. And I have the feeling the best way to take a look at this is to actually open the docs. Uh, package git config. Ignore that. Okay, so we have file. Yeah, this whole organization, I'm, I want to change that so git config file. It's, you know, there, where, where is it? There's a, where's the type git config? Where is that living? It's in git config file, git config, git config, really? Yeah, see, so that is kind of, that's broken now. Like this was never there. I think this was in git config file, git config, but even that is not the path you would want. I think we can just take the time and totally refactor this so that it finally is what I think it should be. And we don't move on with this. We don't continue. I don't have to see this anymore. I was um, already preparing kind of more drastic measures here with the future of the values module. And maybe I can start with yeah, it's kind of in between this crate, right? It's in between being good oxide style. And this here is kind of unused. I mean, good, good repository doesn't use it yet. And a lot of work in that department, but I think it's fair to focus on this one. So we have good config file, mutable multi-value section, resolve good config. And has a hash map like interface. Yeah, also kind of unused. I, I don't think we will go in that direction anymore. I think this looks entirely differently now the way you access this and that's fine. But that's also for another day. This here, this pop use and the module get config. So first get config, that's, this is, you know, it's kind of a duplication. It's a structural thing. This is just for us. 
and get confident, I think it's worth it to just push it to the final state. So this git config struct here, this is going to be, that's a git config file. That's what it represents to us. And they're always on disk. They are, is it, we can open it. Can we also, yeah, I think this always opens from, from disk, even though technically this can also be opened from a, from a buffer. But for now, it's really, this is why we call it file, because it's a disk-based thing, and we never create configuration from a buffer that doesn't live on disk or something like that. So it's a good config file. And as such, it lives in the top level, git config file. And there can be utilities and whatnot. It should live in the file module. And the file module is... Is here, we have that, fortunately. This also means that everything in here can probably totally live one level up. And yeah, I guess I'm in for a bunch of renaming, no change yet. Oh yeah, 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 that's gonna break a lot. No, but it has to happen, huh? It has to happen one day. Get config file, get config. But maybe this, yeah, let's just call it file. Let's get on with it. Get config file. Do you still compile? I did hit enter. Does it work? Nope. Maybe it doesn't want to do it here because it can't actually rename. Oh, it did rename here, that's nice. So maybe the test will work. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's really good. I think something improved previously. Couldn't change doc tests, now it can. That's good. If repository is the sole user that I know of, does this still compile? It's okay to break it temporarily, no problem, but I'm I'm ha happily surprised that this works. So we should be able to pull that in from here and not from there. So let's just break it by, so that lives here, huh? So we can just put this way on top, on the, in the library then, we might, Go nuts with this. Do we have some space here? Value permissions is also all stuff I added. So I think for that, it's time to get out of my sight. Okay, so that you see what's really on the top level a bit more clearly. And then we can take take the structure along with its documentation and just that and put that in the top level as well because that's where it's going to live from now on okay oh not here here let's make it top and center let's just put it right here Okay, and now the imports. Now now that I think of the imports that it will want to put into the top level too, I don't feel comfortable about this anymore. So instead, let's have a private mod types that receives this instead. Then this can take all the uses that we need. And from there, we pop use what we actually want and we specify each individually so it's a bit clearer just see once we look at and uh, once we look at this now just import stuff according to what the ide thinks i wonder if there is something that says import all maybe 
doesn't look like it. So I always go one by one. Unfortunately, that's not usually what I do. And it's simple enough. Okay. So now everything is broken. Let's fix this first. We can even say, now that the import path is so short, we can just do this and save a line. Not that saving lines is what I find valuable, but it's always nice to not add lines and to test that this is actually looking good. And I think it is looking very good. Get config file. Okay. And now, since everything is broken anyway, this mod here, what's this now? Uh, can we get a structure on this? That's just the stuff in the mod here, huh? So there's a bunch of, this is uh, a lot, is it? So there's a bunch of impulse. We could move these. Is this really just what's in here? Or is there other things that have been imported with this? Resolve includes. Resolve includes, uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah, let's do the big, big, big picture stuff first. So file is now in the top level, it will stay that way. I think we can just fix this and then we have better chances to use automation. Um, yeah, it's just imported. Okay. And now this all needs to become upgrade. We could be more specific. We could specify the uh, module that it should live in, but it's usually for me, it's too cumbersome. It makes this too hard to read. So pop crate, fine enough. Good enough. Okay. Still very red, even though this should just not. Oh. Okay. Let's jump to the next one. Hey, next, that should work. Or is a false positive? There's some other issues. Hey, okay. Oh, that, it's really, really slow in catching up apparently. Okay, fine. And more busy work, busy, busy, busy work. No, nearly there, I hope, but it's getting better. How much more is there? Does it jump to different files? This is really just one massive file. Okay, looks good, looks better anyway. Now from env, same thing, but less documentation. Oh. Yeah, okay, that's fine now. Okay, one down. Let's see if we can commit this once it compiles. Oops. That's an invalid import. And there's a bunch of additional errors, but yeah, we only got half of it. Let's just go with the compiler errors here. And let the IDE help us. Okay. What's this? It should have imported. Oh yeah, too slow. And that should be fine now. All right, look up tree node. This lives, it's definitely in terminal lives somewhere. Where do you live? In file, file get config mod. Yeah, I guess we can just, it doesn't detect it. Why does it not detect it? It's inaccessible, this is why. It lives here, but it's pub super. 
collecting all the pop super stuff, we can make pop great. That will make it a bit easier for us. Pop crate. Let's be sure we only look for that in here, huh? Okay, pop super. Nobody needs that. I mean, sure, you could say the more specific it is, the better, but also I'm not a big fan of protecting protecting myself from that as long as it's private or public I'm I'm good that's the granularity I need now I can import it automatically and I just do it look up tree nodes that looks actually like a good input path for that it's definitely just internal great this is nearly compiling here let's get this from here instead okay Look at that, that already works. Now, what do you think about good repository? Are you still happy? You are still happy. Okay, cool. Step by step, it works, that's great. I don't want anything else. Oh, right, running the tests. We keep going. And we can just brute force this one. This is never gonna work again. This is not good config file. Okay. Maybe this. That again you see I'm super sloppy with imports because that's auto fixed later anyway so don't waste your time on making that pretty no need no need oh, this is an easy fix okay getting there Bunch of tests failed. I think that must be doc tests. Yeah, there we go. And they probably failed compiling entirely. Oh. Hi. It does not really jump there, unfortunately. That's always a bit annoying, see? So we can probably fix this with the nice find and replace. Oh, like that, please. Okay. And getting there, it's better. I think since it actually tries to run it, it probably isn't, it probably might be fixed now. Let's prepare the commit. So that's, Factor. And that's the message. Cool. Now for the next move, which would be that I would like to generally move everything from in here one level up. And this means to understand this a bit better. This is pretty empty here. That's that's good. I don't know much about this. Another parser has its own ginormous file. And I don't want to put things together that then have to be pulled apart again because it all makes no sense. So everything here in mod, I think wants to be organized a little bit. Maybe we put some sub modules first so that it's a bit clearer what is what. And then, yeah, okay. So I, th I think having multiple, multiple inputs already helps a bit with that. And this file, by the way, is 1,400 lines, so it will be happy to 
should be a bit smaller. So there's some internal stuff, huh? So that's internal access. That's a kind of, you know, easiest thing, all these inputs here, they can be put into inputs. And maybe they're all nearby from Parsner. Yeah, it's totally inputs, inputs, and some tests. So if this, yeah, maybe if this tests private things, I think it does, huh? Yes, there we go. So there's no way to change this, but we may, might put them into a separate, separate um, file. That's a lot of tests here. Okay, from parser. Is this really parse single section? This is really from parser. Test from parser. Really? Try from? Uh, so try from strings. Yeah, essentially try from strings and then it see, checks the actual content. Okay, where are we? We are in good config mod. So maybe this is how it can, can work. First, split the mod thing up even more and then move everything up, maybe. Or put the whole mod thing here and then split everything up because then, I don't know why. Yeah, we basically have to get rid of this git config crate and I think we can probably, we can probably do this. Here there's, a, yeah, but also I think the test module here, we can just split this out right away. Then this becomes a little bit more manageable. Okay. So that's from parser tests. And it's really more like try from string tests. And then it's a bit clearer that this is a test related module, which unfortunately hangs in our tree, but we can potentially ignore that and not, not put it into our published grades. That's okay. And I think when we use cargo diet, that can do that for us. Yeah, that should still compile. I have no, no doubt about that. Then we can quickly put impulse here. Yeah, so the simple stuff, I just do that right away. And then we have another commit maybe. Try from mod impulse. And to the very bottom here, boom. Now we fix a bunch of imports, I suppose. And doing that always helps you to better see what kind of dependencies there are in terms of imports, right? That's all dependencies to me. And that clears it out. Yeah, what is this one, huh? It's just some error. It's a parser error. See, that's good to know. So for this, I actually don't mind to specify that a bit more and just prefix it. But now in this, you know, because it doesn't matter, we just, have it from here. Hmm, parser error or value parse? I think, yeah, it's a parser error. That makes some sense. Parse from string comes, just import this. Okay, parse from bytes. Kind of similar. It's interesting that this isn't the same. Yeah, there's a lot of work needed. Oh, yeah, see, it's kind of some copy paste there, I presume. A lot of work needed. I handle this crate, I'm saying this, but it's getting better. It really is step by step. There's play. I think this will also clear up the imports of all of these, of the module in general, which right now is just crazy complicated. Just too much. Okay, does that still compile? Unused imports, we can clear that out. 
And it's always a bit unfortunate. How do I? Yeah, let's run. Let's have a check. Duplicate. And let's check it. Better. So this kind of works specifically. Okay. Check one time. Fix the most. Fix the last thing. Unused import as well. Okay. And we're good. Uh, the tests already ran, no need to run this really. And finally, let's push this into its own file. Good, getting there. I think I'm going to continue with this for all the remaining sections based on some sort of criteria that I will make up. But yeah, these sections are already kind of pre filtered. This might even, let's see where this is used. This is used in push section, remove section. Yeah. Push section just there. Okay. Sections by sub name, that is lookup. And rename section, so that's used everywhere. So that's utilities kind of very widespread. And then lastly, section by name. Yeah. Let's call this utilities then. Utils. Help us calls it help us here that's fine it's just utils I usually use in a bunch of places as a name so that's most familiar to me and that's what makes it preferable okay getting there so it's really, really running hot here, which is unusual for my computer, but it's IntelliJ that goes nuts. And OBS also really wants to have <laughs> two cores. Okay, fine. And it's done. And the packet, uh, the module can be extracted into its own thing now. Let's continue understanding what's going on here. So that's raw value access, huh? Raw values, but we also have strings and integers here. Which I would pull out and put to where the other high level things are, like Boolean, integer, multi value. So Maybe put them all into one Gimpel block um, and call it something. Okay, but that sounds like a plan. First, strings and integers for the rescue. Oi. Yeah, all these stock tests, really. They are great for the users of such a crate, but not so great to look at unless you kind of auto hide them, which might be possible. So just put it into a new input block and maybe just a new module when we add it. Mm, thousand lines, yeah, let's have a new module. Comfort, hmm. Access, I mean, it's related to access. Um, I usually call it when you are just reading values. 
and then this here. Oh, let's see. Let's just drop dump this here. And that's the comfortable interface or comfortable for accessing values. That looks oh yeah, there's this event. Let's uh, yeah, let's just call it a it's kind of confusing because it makes sense if you know details about how this works that it's called event, but also not so much anymore for me to me anyway. And now a whole lot of imports again. There's of course some sort of duplication that you know wouldn't be necessary if you dump everything into the same module. That's a good, something I'm willing to accept. Oh yeah, and all the docs are gonna break. Oh my god, that's gonna be quite some work. That should still compile, huh? Uh, So that's not the right, or the import is missing entirely. Great values now maybe. Values integer try from. Yeah, it should import it. Now it can see it, good. And now this should compile. Maybe I go back to check mode, that's faster. I also would expect that these input blocks never break a test, so check is what we want. Also to save. CPU, all right, good. And now we can pull the other easy to use functions like string path, boolean, integer. Boolean integer and put it into the high level thing. Okay, mm -hmm. we call it event. It's too long, so now we call it a oh. is there more okay now there's probably one or two more of these but maybe not Okay, and then I think we can split it apart by um, the lower level stuff and mutation. So lower level read only and mutation. Okay, first of all, that does build, right? Yes except for these imports here. They can be removed to, huh? Okay. Nice. Then I think it's also time to put this away. And we can put more access functionality there, especially the low level thing. So let's just have this block right now to be the lower level API for accessing values. Okay. Can I do? Nah, anyway, good enough. So here we have value, try value. And then the raw value stuff. Oh yeah, maybe maybe raw value can can move first. And yeah, it's definitely its own thing. Just 
bike rename this to A while I'm ah while I'm at it. Okay, that did work though. And over time, this will have all the imports it needs to not be too unhappy. Hmm. Is it an enum or is it a struct? I think it's a struct. Let's see. Okay. Raw value mut. Yeah, fine. Oh. Mm, I do hope I'm I'm right with this. Hmm. So now that this compiles, I'm thinking, wow, I'm kind of loading everything into X's and it's already 500 lines of code. So I think it would be better to acknowledge that this is huge. So let's call it raw. Give it all the all the things it might need. And just take this out of my site. Ah too much. Ah now we have with integer here. Okay. This goes here. That should actually compile right away, except for a bunch of unused imports, maybe this. Yeah, just to, because it's so much that it needs, it makes it look more complicated than it actually is. And then from that point of view, it's really better to separate that a little. Error. Okay, now we are back in the game. Yeah, unfortunately, I have to go step by step here because of the UI that doesn't stay open. If I pin it, then it stays open all the time. I can't bring it back up because I don't know the hotkey. So, yeah, it takes a little longer than it has to, but now it compiles without warnings. Great. And we have a mod raw and we can immediately turn this into a module directory and access raw access comfort and yeah, let's just do this and then this means all this goes here And that's the lower level, which was supposed to be what? No, I think it was kind of supposed to be raw, huh? No, it was supposed to be value, try value, multi value, section, and so on. And this is split into two mutation, mutable and non-mutable. We're talking about 500 lines of code. I think we can dump this into one module and be, be good with it. Except for these, these are in it. Let's, let's go with in it. Mod in it, everything that can be used to Instantiate this goes into its own hook space. Second ball we made up. <gasps> Where are you? Okay, and in it now has also been <coughs> created, which finally leaves us with the actual value axis. This is a private function, I think this qualifies it to just go into utils for now where is utils here which also means we're gonna make it pop great all right what happened here okay 
Maybe that works. I'm still happy. Looks happy enough. <clears throat> then there's just this left. How much? How much? What are we talking? 42 till 471. So 430 ish. 430 lines. That's okay. So I think since this also includes mutation, access mud, and we've got raw, we've got comfort, and we can definitely be in the game for, yeah, let's just take all of it. Value. Let's check one more time. I think that's really all mutation. Lang and is empty. And the number of entries in the config just ignores any comments. For example, a config with multiple empty sections will return zero. Hmm. So that's counting sections. No, it call it's the number of entries, the number of values actually entries values in the config because entries could be sections too for me anyway and lang you know since it's so like what the length of in bytes the length in sections i would call definitely call this differently it's num and num values Section length, same thing, returns the number of entries in the section, see, so. Value, and lang implies it's quick to understand, but it's not, this is, has to be iterated and produced. Num values, value count, I'm always unsure, I like num values. First, let's see if this compiles. Let's not go further. Okay. It checks. Does it test? Mm -hmm. Oh, look. So there we now cleaned or cleared out an issue with imports being done from the wrong location in these from string tests, which can access private members. Good, so that's a little fix right there and everything else should pass. Good. Well, it's a big commit as well, but so far I, I do still feel comfortable doing it. But we can just have a safety commit because why not? just amend to that commit and now let's get yeah actually let's not get this one back but instead change this to num values I don't know who really is interested in this but let's just let's keep it and let's rename it, same here. <clears throat> the length of a section. Is this naturally the amount of values in the config? Okay, this ignores any conf, any comments. the number of values in the section num values <clears throat> the 
this kind of mimics the VEC API, even though it's definitely far from being a VEC. But let's keep it. That's cool here, must use, because it should certainly be used if it's produced. Okay, does this still work? It looks like it. And that's a breaking change for sure. And there's the commit message. Okay. Everything still works. And now this can finally be moved elsewhere. Let's just take the whole thing. Go to access and that's what comfort raw and low low level maybe let's just call it low level and this should be renamed to a it's not super easy to rename if you don't know how what to type and what to not type so here we should be able to take everything that is left as you Ooh, I don't know but this definitely huh this we can just take there's nothing else ah, I don't I don't know let's just bring it all back I'm not sure they're really small little bits and pieces that might still be important for someone okay section body i want to split this into mutation and non-mutation put everything <coughs> in the right at the right time because then we can split the types there's always section body body mod i think splitting this later will be Okay. So I had a name. Okay, that might solve it. Extract and check. Okay, let's try to memorize. Try from. Hmm. Hmm. And that's as far as my memory goes. Oh yeah, good. That's all it is. That's better. Now the imports look a bit cleaner. Look up tree node. All this said, I don't know if that is perfectly organized uh, according to where it should be. Depends on who's using it. I don't know that yet, even though it should be relatively easy to find out. And since we have more descriptive file names, it should be easier to understand as well. So this looks like it's primarily in utils, but also in resolved. Yeah, so let's just leave it here. Even though that could be pushed into types that are relative to uh, git config here. Ugh, and I still have to move all this one level up. But yeah, that shall be fine. Anything else? No, that fills. I think then we can just go ahead and split this up into mutation and no mutation. It's going to be read only low level access methods. <clears throat> read only mutating low-level access methods. Okay, then this is read-only, try-value, multi-value, section, section, mut. Section by name, name
with header section new uh, new remove push remove remove be remove push rename and then we have to read only so let's see if that looks good section my name section multi value yeah that looks good and now the same in reverse try value multi value section section what we keep and then section by name <clears throat> there's a bunch of additional section access here section by name with header read only new section that's mutating new section remove push rename Cool. Yeah, how big? 446. No. That could indeed be mutating read only. Could indeed be split once again. Let's check it first. Okay. Works. And then it's probably just, yeah, let's just split it. Mod read only shared immutable, mutable read only and mutating. Let's call it read only and mutating. Mm. That's the big one, huh? 300 line, 300 just for that. But it ends here. No, it's actually evenly split. Nice. And that's kind of the module size I'm comfortable with. Wait, only. Wait, right. Let's put this into its own directory. And now we can extract what mutating. Here we go. Now there should just be a bunch of warnings. Section header name. So that's, is that interesting? Hmm. It's interesting that the mutating one still needs section body, for example. Ah, it creates a new section body and that's never mutating. Okay, fine. But that looks good to me. Let's just put this. Oh, wait, that's not correct. Let's make another refactor for that. Because that seems to be finishing the low level mod here for the most part. Yeah. Then we have pub. Yeah, I think that means still need to reorganize these because they expose too much. Maybe, maybe because functions is also pub here, huh? So that should not be pub. Um, but yeah, okay. First, let's just call this refactor. Okay. Now let's look at the structure again. config file yeah it's still in there we know that but now yeah so this must be private clearly and these functions from n from n path they are actually also not public yeah, absolutely private yes please nine 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 so 
from env. And I also don't want this to be included like that. And this is private. So it's pub crate. Oh wait, is it? Yeah, it's just a function. It's just a structural thing. So definitely should be private because that's just called from the top level later. And then we have the from end error, which is why this module exists. But these functions here, they are definitely an implementation detail. Oh. Excuse me. Ah, oh, yeah, from env. Wait, where is that actually? Use create from env. We, I really broke a lot now. Let's extract this. Try again. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. That looks a bit more like it so from path that is something yeah what it's there oh it seems so seems to be so very broken So IntelliJ can still find it. Ah, oh, yeah, right. This should be pub create too, right? Not private. Otherwise, nobody can see it anymore. And that's better. Now, let's avoid glob imports. <clears throat> because that's pop crate at the very best pop crate and we specify it i don't like blob imports in non-test code okay resolve includes to organize it like this okay better maybe even put it down there so we start with the types and have a bunch of modules here where we import a bunch of stuff okay now should still <coughs> should still work Function is never used. I mean, that is interesting. What? Say again? Function is never used. Really? Uh, yeah, bef but what? I thought... Oh, really? Is this supposed to be public? I thought that was part of the part of the config file and it produces a file so it should be on the top level okay never mind then okay then you do it like this <laughs> it should be on the top level of file so we get config file and then from env then it makes sense <clears throat> from env path okay and now we're talking. Good, let's look at this again. Oh yeah, all these docs that need to be fixed. But we're not done yet. Yeah. From env, error, correct. From path, options, error, correct. And then we have a bunch of files here, which is a good config file from env, from env first, resolve includes. Resolve includes is private. So here it's pub great, but this is pub strangely. Uh, 
And also those who really need it, huh? They can probably like who who's calling this? Init is calling this. So it can probably be close to init then. Oh wait, something else calling this? From env is also calling this. Yeah. Alright. I mean resolve includes whatever, doesn't matter. It's private anyway. How big? Turn lines. Just the right size. <clears throat> oh wait. This is already private one, right? Yes. So there's no need to have an additional internal one. Look, this is superfluous. Absolutely superfluous. And now we can just import it from in there. And I wonder like it's get config file resolve includes. Yeah, we want to have the functions on module because it's big enough. So we call it that. Is Clippy happy with something like that? Usually it argues. I'm not duplicating names. Yeah. First the config check. That also, oh wait, I broke the tests, good. Super. Yeah. That's generally not so great. Now it needs a ton of these, but we should be able to import it because we are in its vicinity. Okay. Everything works once more. Back to resolve includes we are in good config file. Um, includes. Yeah, there's probably something you can do to get better names for this, but that can be done later because it really is our private thing, fortunately. It's okay to be, to be a bit messy there for a little longer. And uh, that's okay too, good. Now let's look at it again. There's still this top level git config include that I definitely do not like also here these structs huh? there will be good config file mutable multiple yeah maybe it's good from env from path i mean it's basically a bunch of implementation and these top level functions so that's good now we are ready to move it all up so let's refactor Uh, fix exports. That was too much public. And now for the well, probably hard part. Git config move everything one level up. So here is pubmod git config definitely not. Here's this module. We could just dump every all of this here. Now let's see how far we go and then by hand we move move the files around. Okay. Now up. No. Some uses here. Okay. Pop use resolved. Yeah, this stuff also needs review for sure. Okay, pop is no. Some types that are crate specific. So these we probably want to use, want to put into 
some submodule, but we do this later. All this is quite specific, so now it's ready. These are ready to go elsewhere. And now we should be able to just move all these by hand because we don't want IntelliJ to be smart about this, I think. Okay, so in theory, it now finds these and can pull them in. And there's probably a lot of breakage because of this additional layer that needs to be dealt with. Oh. Step by step. Yeah, and that is now done. Surprisingly easy, easy. everything compiles. And let's check how this looks like now. Uh, get config file so top level file type nice get config file from and from path a bunch of structs and some functions and that's that's it now we have a lot of broken links here that need to be fixed First, to commit, resolve, dissolve, get config module in favor of file module. Okay. Now, get repository. Does it still work? It does still compile. I'm again very impressed by this. And now Clippy, are you happy? It builds everything. Oh yeah, this is fixed, fixed elsewhere. using char instead ah it's about the char thing just here on the left side though huh okay and I think I just double fix this then huh and now clippy redundant slice That works, and now the docs, maybe there's a simple way. Ay, 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 interesting that this can fail like that. Ah, it's a, so there are some paths which are still wrong and other tools that never seem to be built in project. Oh, it's really just this one, okay. Yeah, and I probably should mention that git config is now file and it's on the top level, which also I didn't do yet, which is totally a breaking change. Okay. Let's go in to the big guns. This is now create file. Okay. Try it again. And then this. Is now file. Good that's so uniquely named, so I'm not pretty confident we don't do too much here. And then we have 
everything in here get config something let's do just this simple and there's my file something should be unique enough to not lay waste to other things getting better super git config Super file. Ah, okay. Create file and super file. Oh, wait. Actually, that does not compute. Eh? So, first of all, things are now file even though they don't matter but create file from env should be oh that's actually create file from env it's not on the thing anymore is that intended because that clearly was different one day hmm we can still re-add that huh yeah hmm Actually, I, that's a good point, documentation. Thanks for bringing it up. It was like this from path, from env path. No, no item name file and module file. That's true. Okay, so super should now be, let's go step by, should now be create. Super should be great. And let's see. Just create file index names. Oi. Yeah, okay. That's okay. We can just remove all the changes then to get pack. is this and we are getting there so super file is great file oh, I should have so copy pasted huh Okay, now it's really just the API change somehow that snuck in there and was not that ever, right? So, yeah, this also has the benefit that we don't have to deal with this. We can just put it here. So let's put it, let's put it right on where it belongs file or oh, maybe that's the problem that it's unclear what what kind of file is that why is this even possible should this not be disallowed because of one you know uh, rust 2018 idioms I think it should because I think this this will generate static a static file. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Am I? I think I'm pretty much. In... Let's not do this now. Let's say that most of it is now fixed.
uh, overruled by, did I do something else that I didn't notice here? Yes. Let's see if that is better. Not quite the time yet. Okay, so now we put this back on top of... Uh, actually, let's let's clean it up first because that should really be not allowed. Rust 2018 idioms. And this. Oh, unused, we might not need anymore. It's unneeded anyway, right? Yeah, all these lifetime parameters, now you need to mention them. I think they're just anonymous. That's the way. If they were not mentioned before, they are anonymous. How many errors? Oh. Yeah, right. Hmm. Okay, I think I can go with the final replace here and it's done now we can disallow rust 2018 uh, idioms which should allow us to finally get back to i'm um, doing the docs here which means yeah bring that back so instead of having a function we just have have it on the type itself from path duplicate import error duplicate import really oh yeah right it's actually now here and this becomes an import file with some lifetime and this lifetime will be bound to yeah that will be static and that's why we did that to actually say specifically yeah this is a fully owned file and not just something else and this is why rust 2018 idioms are not super awesome because they encourage you to kind of write code that isn't saying what it really does so now if it compiles at all all right this goes away oh from path. This also goes away. So this works, yes. Not a function. Ah yeah. This is fine. This file from env looks better as well like this, huh? Good, good, good. Getting there. This is it. This is it. And now all still works let's check the docs one more time because i think file from and from path all yeah, right that's modules and they just have the error there and all this is linked up correctly and that's what we want bring init functions back to uh, type and with the magic of editing I also made my final comment here and believe since since now this is uh, let's update this a massive PR <laughs> it's time to to merge this and say okay the test we we do in another PR and kind of clean this up because I, I think it's already pretty good even though I didn't actually review the code that implements include if very much if at all but for me it would be worth happening once the tests are that are seemingly missing or it's the test suite is made so that it's kind of more obvious what the tests are doing and yeah that's it for this episode thanks a lot for watching and goodbye <laughs>